Hello, I'm Dr. Vivian Burt, Professor Emeritus at UCLA and founder and consultant of the UCLA Women's Life Center. In a previous quick take, I reported on brexanolone, a neuroactive steroid administered intravenously for the treatment of postpartum depression. Today, I'm going to bring you hot off the press news about xeranolone, the first oral agent approved to treat postpartum depression. Postpartum depression is generally treated with psychotherapy and antidepressants, often augmented with agents to address anxiety and insomnia. In the last few years, postpartum depression has been hypothesized to be due to hormonally driven, dysregulated brain networks. Allopregnanolone, a metabolite of progesterone, increases in pregnancy and peaks in the third trimester, and then steeply decreases following delivery. Like brexanolone, zoranolone is an allopregnanolone agonist. But unlike brexanolone, which is delivered over a 60-hour infusion, it is given orally over 14 days. The study by Christina Deligianidis and her co-authors summarizes the data supporting the use of zoranolone for the treatment of postpartum depression. This randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study comprised 196 patients, all with major depression with onset during the third trimester or within four weeks postpartum. Excluded were women with histories of bipolar disorder, psychosis, or suicidal ideation or behavior. Concomitant antidepressant use was permitted, and the patients agreed not to breastfeed from first study dose through seven days following the last study dose. The subjects were randomized to two groups, half on zoranolone and half on placebo, which they took for 14 consecutive days, after which treatment with active drug or placebo was discontinued. The patients were followed for a total of 45 days from study inception. The primary outcome measure was change in HAMD-17 scores at day 15. However, there were a number of important secondary outcomes, including changes in HALD at days 3, 28, and 45, and clinical global improvement scores at day 15. Furthermore, HAMD responses assessed as at least 50% reduction of baseline scores and actual remission assessed as achievement of HAMD total scores of 7 or less were measured on day 15. Changes in anxiety were also assessed using the HAM-A instrument, measured at day 15. Other self-ratings by the subjects were used to assess degree of concurrence with these clinical measurements and included the PHQ-9 and the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scores. Montgomery Asperg Depression Rating Scales were also done. Treatment Emergent Adverse Effects Emergence of suicidal ideation or behavior is detected by the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale, vital signs, and clinical lab measurements, as well as ECGs, were also assessed. Importantly, the subjects were demographically balanced and comprised 21.9% African American and 38.4% Hispanic Latino women. Most of the patients had baseline HAMD scores of at least 26 on the 17-item scale, and most had moderate to severe anxiety as measured by their baseline HAMD scores. The results were quite impressive. First of all, there was a statistically significant reduction in depression at day 15 as compared to placebo, with a reduction of 15.6 points for the Zoranolone group versus 11.6 points for the placebo group. Importantly, of those whose depression responded, zoranolone was better than placebo as early as day three, and this trend continued at every subsequent study visit. By day 15, 57% of patients on zoranolone had achieved HAMD response as compared to 38.9% of the placebo group representing an odds ratio of 2.02. Improvement as measured by all measured time points was sustained through day 45, that is well beyond the 14 days of Zoranolone administration.
At day 15, improvements in anxiety were also statistically significantly better in the Zeratolone group than the placebo group. With regard to actual remission from depression, by day 15, Hamadi remission was numerically better than the placebo group and statistically significantly greater at day 45, that is 44% in the active group versus 29.4% in the placebo group. Patient reported outcomes as measured by PH29 and the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale matched overall Hamadi measurements. Zoran alone appeared to be safe and generally well tolerated with most common treatment emergent adverse effects of somnolence, dizziness, and sedation. There was no loss of consciousness, no significant changes in vital signs or ECG, and there was no increase in suicidal ideation or withdrawal symptoms after discontinuation of Zoranolone. So, in summary, results of this study, which were the basis for FDA approval, indicate that Zoranolone is a fast-acting medication that effectively treats postpartum depression with efficacy as early as day three of treatment and extending to day 45 of this study. In addition, Zoranolone appears to be effective for anxiety, often a common component of postpartum depression. So this appears to be a rigorous and well-done study with multiple instruments across multiple times from day three of the 14-day protocol for drug administration to day 45. Nevertheless, it should be noted that the study enrollees all had severe postpartum depression with HAMDs of 26 or greater. There was also a high placebo response, probably reflecting the fact that all subjects, placebo and actively treated subjects, had eight visits in the 45 days of the study, which does not reflect the attention given typically to similar patients. Since subjects were not permitted to breastfeed their infants during the study, the effects of zoranolone on lactation and the extent of infant exposure through breast milk is unknown. Finally, since the study ended at day 45, more studies need to be done to determine long-term efficacy. With all this said, Zoranolone represents an exciting breakthrough treatment for postpartum depression. For the very first time, a medication targeted for postpartum depression that is easy to administer via a 14-day oral regimen and provides rapid and sustained, at least through 45 days of treatment, is available. Adjunctive antidepressants during and after treatments with Zoranolone were permitted in this study and therefore would likely be advisable for patients with severe postpartum depression. Longer-term studies do need to be done to determine how sustained efficacy is, that is, beyond the 45 days of this study. And studies are needed to determine efficacy of zoranolone in less severely depressed postpartum patients. Zoranolone clearly represents a much-needed treatment option for severely depressed postpartum women. We will look forward to more studies to assess its efficacy over the long term and in other clinical studies. Music